Hi friends, this is CryptoPump, and today I will tell you about the capabilities of the Dex Screener platform. In this video, we will explore Dex Screener in detail, a powerful tool that I use to identify promising tokens on decentralized exchanges. I will guide you step by step through all its sections, from the homepage to the smallest nuances so you can easily find tokens, analyze data, and select projects with high potential. We will move at a slow and accessible pace, so even beginners can understand the functionality and start their journey into the world of cryptocurrencies. Want to stay updated and receive valuable market insights? Join our Telegram channel. Here I share exclusive insights that will help you spot key moments before others. The link is in the description. Don't miss your chance and let's get to work. I track tokens daily and Dex Screener is a great help. It's a web service that I access both on my phone and computer. It shows which projects are currently active and what to pay attention to. I started my journey with Ethereum, where fees were high, but there were almost no bots. And later I switched to Solana. There are many fraudulent schemes there, but also plenty of opportunities. Want to know how it works? Let's open Dex Screener together and see what it offers. The first thing you'll see is the homepage. To the right of the logo is a large number, the total trading volume over the last 24 hours. It's like a thermometer that indicates how active the market is. If this number increases by, say, 20% compared to yesterday, it means people are trading actively and there's potential for growth. Conversely, if it decreases, that might indicate a lull. I usually wait for the market to pick up again. A little to the left, you'll notice tabs with the names of blockchains, Ethereum, Solana, Binance Smart Chain, and a few others. It's like a toggle. I select Solana, click it, and the list of tokens refreshes, showing only projects from that network. You can also choose the network you're interested in and continue exploring. Now let's scroll down a bit. Here are the filters. They help filter out the noise and leave only what we really need. The first button is last 24 hours. I click on it, and the service shows tokens that have appeared in the last 24 hours. Next, I set the parameters. I set the trading volume to over a million dollars. This means there's already some movement in the token, and it's not dead. I choose liquidity from $50,000. This way, I'm sure the token won't crash with the first sale. I also set the age to under 24 hours. Fresh projects are often the most promising. Then I sort by the five minute dynamics to see current changes. Once everything is set, I click apply, and the list of tokens refreshes. Now it only shows those that meet my criteria, and I can choose which ones to work with. Let's take a closer look at this list. It's divided into columns, and each has its significance. The first column shows the token price in dollars, meaning its current value. The second column reflects the trading volume, showing how much money has flowed through the token over the past day. The third column indicates the age of the token, showing how many hours or days. I analyze this data and choose a token that looks active, for example one with good volume and slight growth. Now I click on the token and its page opens. On the left, you'll see a large chart. This is the heart of the token displaying its current state. Above the chart are the time frame buttons. 1 second, 1 minute, 5 minutes, 15 minutes, and 1 hour. I choose 5 minutes. It's easier to track the changes this way. On the chart, you'll see candlesticks. Green means the price is rising, and red means it's falling. Each candlestick represents 5 minutes of the token's life. Next to the time frame, you can select the type of chart. Line, candlestick, or area. I prefer candlesticks. They are more informative and visually clear. Further to the right is a toggle. Price or market cap. I select market cap. This allows me to assess the token's significance rather than just its dollar value. To the left of the chart is a toolbar. Here, you can draw. I click on the line tool. This is a trend line that helps understand the direction in which the price is moving. Or I can choose the Fibonacci tool. I set levels where the price might slow down or reverse. There's a button with percentages. It shows how much the token has risen or fallen over a specific period. At the bottom of the chart is a timeline that moves from left to right, allowing you to see changes. And on the right is a value scale which depends on what you've selected, price or market cap. Now let's look to the right of the chart. Here you'll see the token ticker. It's short designation, like Ava. Just below are links to social media, the website, Twitter, and Telegram. I always check these links to ensure that the token actually exists. If there are no links or if they raise suspicion, it could be a fraudulent project, and I prefer to ignore it. Moving further down, below the chart, here are the token parameters. The first line shows the price in dollars, which is its current value. The second line shows liquidity, which is the real money that is in circulation. The third line is the market capitalization, the total value of all tokens. The fourth line shows the price dynamics over the hour, 6 hours, or 24 hours. I prefer to look at the 24 hour trend to understand the overall direction. The fifth line displays the number of buys and sells for the day. The sixth line shows the trading volume in dollars. I check to ensure that liquidity is at least one third of the market cap. If the number of buys exceeds the sells, that's also a good sign. It means the token is in demand. Now let's move down to the tabs below the chart. The first one is transactions. I open it, and you'll see the following information. The first column displays the time of the last transaction. The second column shows the type of transaction, whether it's a buy or a sell. The third column indicates the amount in dollars spent. The fourth column shows the number of tokens that were bought or sold. The fifth column displays the transaction price. The sixth column shows the wallet address that made the transaction. Buys are highlighted in green, and sells are in red. I click on the wallet, and a window appears on the right with its how much it has bought, how much it has sold, and what balance remains. This helps understand who is trading and how. The next tab is holders. It shows how many users own the token. If there are several thousand holders, that's a good sign. However, if nearly the entire supply is concentrated in one wallet, I get cautious. That's too risky. The third tab is the bubble map. It demonstrates the network of connections between wallets. I check for any suspicious links to see if there's just one address from which a web of connections extends. 
At the very bottom of the page is the token creation date. Sometimes a token has only existed for 8 hours. It's important to know. Here you'll also find the contract address, a line like 7i PDW. I copy it and verify it on the official token website. This helps protect against counterfeits and fraud. To the right of the contract is an arrow. I click on it and I'm taken to Soulscan, where I can trace the entire history of the token. This is how Dex Screener opens up opportunities for market analysis, helping you find promising tokens and identify places to earn. It becomes simple once you know what to pay attention to. Now, you know how to use Dex Screener step by step. Want more practical ideas and life tips? Join our Telegram channel and trading chat. There, we share relevant information daily. The link is in the description. Thank you for being with us. Subscribe to CryptoPump, give us a like, and don't forget to turn on notifications. See you in the next video.